Word of Life broadcast with Professor John Anoche is made possible by partners of John Anoche Ministries. Still to come on Word of Life with Prophet John Anoche. From now to the time of December, yeah, you are going to see what you have not seen before. Throughout the year 2021, you are going to see certain things you have never seen before since the world began. And then the Bible says when it is over, then the church shall be gathered together again. And the church shall stay because as yet we are going through persecutions and trials to refine us because all the time gold must go through fire before it is refined. The Antichrist is not yet because something remarkable will happen in the 2027, the year 2027. The whole world will give heed to one person. So everything has been arranged to that era and I want you to take note of that. Hallelujah. Thank you for the impartation and the implantation of your word in our spirit in the name of Jesus and it's transforming us in Jesus' name to function in the greater glories of Christ Jesus. Thank you, my Father, for your power. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Now, um, I'm handling a topic by uh, the name, the mystery of iniquity. Mystery of iniquity, or mystery of wickedness, or mystery of lawlessness. Um, these are the same thing, word, the same words used interchangeably. So the mystery of iniquity, or mystery of um, wickedness, or lawlessness is the same thing. The chief scripture of this particular topic is speak from the book of Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, all right? The book of 2 Thessalonians is the work of the Spirit given to Apostle Paul at a time when there was a seed of false doctrine which had been sown among the Thessalonian church, causing wavering of their faith in Christ Jesus. Apostle Paul set out the record straight by taking away the destructive seeds sown. And um, he also presents the seed of truth in the midst of persecution and encouraging the believers on the present suffering, which will result in the future glory, promised them in scripture and the prophets. And the prophets. Therefore, in the midst of persecution and tribulation, um, expectations were very, very high in Christ Jesus. And uh, the false teachings concerning the coming day of our Lord Jesus Christ was clarified by Paul. And I want you to understand this one. The day of the Lord, Paul said, the day of the Lord had not yet come as the other people were making the church to believe that the day of the Lord was, you know, at, at, at that present time. But the Lord has spoken through scripture that the day of the Lord was coming. So Paul then reentreated, Paul reentreated that to the believers and to the church at the time that they should not lazy about but they should labor for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Okay? The gospel of salvation and the doctrine of the Lord. Why? Because he, he began to talk about the preceding events to the coming of the day of the Lord. Um, so he spoke about the kind of things that must precede um, the day of the Lord. All right? And so some of the events that will happen was actually the falling away. But the Bible says that um, the day of the Lord will not come unless the falling away comes first. Then the falling away comes before the, the Antichrist, okay, before the day of the Lord. But in between that time, there is also another kind of event that has been captured that will happen to the people of this world. And so it is captured in the scripture. It's captured in the same book of Second Thessalonians. And I just want us to take a look at that. And that is what is uh, and is captured as the mystery of what wickedness or the mystery of iniquity. And um, it's a mystery. Since it's a mystery, it has to be explained. So that the Bible says that these mysteries were hidden from ages. Now it has been revealed to us the saint. So we have to know and understand the mystery of wickedness. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. Now at the time Apostle Paul was revealing this particular word, there were a lot of tribulations and persecutions of the saints at the time in Christ Jesus, who were in Christ already. So the persecutions and tribulations and all that is not, is, this is not the first time we are talking about tribulation coming and persecutions happening. Now there were already tribulations and persecutions that they faced with, but the Bible says that there shall be a great tribulation. So the difference between their tribulation, what happened in their era and our era is that this our era is called the great tribulation. Jesus said, such as has never happened before since the world began. That means he makes it what? A very great one. And the Lord has been speaking about it in the scriptures. 
The prophet spoke about it. Apostles spoke about it. The book of Revelation, it is there so that we might understand and prepare ourselves. Amen. And I believe that this year, the 2020 year and 2021 is a preparation year for the preparation year for the church of Jesus Christ. Okay. Because a lot of events are going to happen. A lot of events, a lot of events preceding the coming, you know, of the Antichrist and the coming of Jesus Christ will come before all these things happen. Amen. Before Jesus finally will come. Hallelujah. So I want us to go into the Bible quickly and then let's learn something. Mystery of iniquity means secret of wickedness or transgression or contempt or violation of law or a condition without the law. So when we say something is iniquity, we are talking about, but it's a mystery. That means secret of wickedness or secret of lawlessness, secret behind the transgressions, um, secret behind violation of law or a condition without the law. So it's a secret, it's a mystery. That means the people who are involved in that, unless the Lord reveal, you will not know where all these things are coming from. And the Bible calls it the mystery of wickedness. And I want us to go into the scriptures and then begin to talk about. This is actually in the uh, Greek, uh, Greek rendition where uh, it talks about anomaya. Anomaya is, um, you know, wickedness or iniquity. That is what the Bible referred to um, in the, the Greek rendition. So I want us to go into the Bible, the book of 2 Thessalonians, and let's learn something from there. One, let me read from the verse 1 up to the verse number 9 so we can have understanding of what the Bible says. Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So it was this particular chapter was dealing with apostasy, you know. So let's let's you know continue to read. Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our and our gathering together to him. We ask you, okay, our gathering together unto him, I will talk about that in, a, in, in another, you know, session uh, where the Bible was, you know, referring us to um, the convocation. Uh, many people have, may have heard me talk about convocation. This is the gathering together to the Lord. So the church of Jesus Christ, the universal church of Jesus Christ must gather together in a procession in waiting, to the, in waiting for the Lord. The Bible has talked about that. And so it is that. And this is what will usher the two witnesses, okay? Will usher the whole church, the universal church of Jesus Christ into a, a kind of convocation where Jesus will have to come and meet. So they will give directives and directions as to where the church of Jesus Christ must be because the Antichrist will come. And the Bible says, Jesus said, the day you see the abomination of desolation set up in the holy place, which was spoken of by Daniel, the Bible said, let him that is on the mountains flee let him that is in Judea flee to the mountains. Let him that is in his house flee to the housetop. The Bible has indicated that, the, he said, there will be great tribulation such as was never, okay? And, and, and the like of it has never been and it will never be since the world began and the end. That is what the Bible has said. That means the great tribulation is coming and it is spearheaded by the Antichrist or the lawless man, the Bible has said, all right? So the mystery of lawlessness has something to do with, with all these things that we are talking about. So we will go into it and then and detail everything that the Lord has spoken about this, you know. So our gathering together to him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit or word or by letter, as if from us as though the day of Jesus, the day of Christ had come. So this is what Paul was correcting. So the people were shaking and, you know, in fear and all that. And Paul said, go out there and labor in, in the gospel of salvation and in doctrine. Because the day of the Lord has not come yet. There are certain events that precede his coming. And we have not seen that event. So he was telling, trying to tell them and trying to correct them with the proper timings and proper events with times, seasons that will happen. So when you see the event happen, then know that. And lo and behold, those events have started happening. And that is why we are coming to you to give you all this word so that you prepare and you know that the day of the Lord is at hand. Now, let no one deceive you by any means for that day will not come. Listen to the word of God. Unless the falling away comes first. So I have addressed the falling away. So if you go into our um, YouTube broadcast, you will see um, titles of uh, my messages um, about the mystery of the falling away. You will see them, the falling away. You see them there. So you can now understand the falling away. Um, 
that this word is just here falling away, but what are the things um, that leads to the falling away? What are the signs of the falling away? And what is the meaning of falling away and all that? There are certain characteristics that uh, must feature on the falling away or uh, must come before we see that we can term something to be a falling away, okay? So we have described that one there. So you have to go there and then just look at it. Amen. Unless the falling away comes first and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, the son of perdition, the Bible, who opposed and exalt himself. So he said the falling away will come first. Then the sin, the, the man of sin, the Bible referred to the Antichrist as the man of sin, as the, as the son of perdition, who opposes and exalt himself above all that is called God and that is worshipped so that he sits as God in the temple of God. So the Bible said the abomination of desolation, the abomination that makes desolate, was sits in the holy place. This is what he's talking about. It's abomination. He will make himself God or equal to God. Showing himself that he is God. Listen, there is God, but this man will show himself as God. Now the Bible says, do not, do you not remember that when I was still with you. I told you these things. And now you know. And in the book of Acts chapter number, you know, clearly we, we see in the book of Acts chapter number 20 that Paul, when he was, you know, um, addressing the church at the time, was telling them that after his departure, salvage wolves will come in and they will not spare the flock. And he said, as he was even still talking, the Antichrist and the spirit of Antichrist has already begun their work. And I will show you the spirit of the Antichrist in, a, in our next episode so you can understand that all these things started even when Paul was still there. And Paul was in Rome at the time and he was speaking. And he said, even as he's standing there, there are savage wolves who will enter into the flock and they will not spare them. And these are the people that were that, that were preceding the, 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 the Antichrist. They were carrying the spirit of the Antichrist. So Paul was speaking about it and showing the people of God the timelines. Amen. And so he says, I told you these things and now you know what is restraining and, and now you know what is restraining that he may be revealed in his own time. So the Antichrist will be revealed in his own time. Then the Bible says in the verse 7, for the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. So lawlessness, the mystery of iniquity, in the other translation, he said the mystery of iniquity. In other translations, he says the mystery of wickedness. So the mystery of iniquity or lawlessness is already at work. Only he who, he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one, so it's the mystery of lawlessness. Okay? Then this, describing the characteristics of the people, the kind of people that will be um, spearheading this kind of... Um, um, movement, this evil movement. They are called the mystery of wickedness. How they come about and how they're going to work is, is a mystery and it's wickedness. All right? So the Bible is talking about that. So he who now restrains will do so unto. So he who now has been brought to the end, who restrains, who restrains, will restrain, will continue to restrain until he's taken out of the way. He is taken out of the way. Now you know that it's not the church because the church is not he. The church is the bride. Of Christ. There are so many proofs of the Bible that, you know, that you can skip the he. Amen. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power signs and lying wonders. That means this guy as he's coming, all the things that will precede his coming are lies. Deception. So that means that the church must be aware that when this guy is coming, a lot of things, plagues and all that will happen. And it's according to deception. And one of the things that makes me know that all these things are happening is that the Lord Jesus said, the major players, okay, all the major players of the end time assignment in the church have come around. So it makes the time to be very short. And the events are happening. And so you need to understand and know that these things are really taking you know, place. And the Bible said, that the verse 10, it says, and with all unrighteous deception 
among those who perish. So they will, they will deceive those who perish. Those who perish. So it might be possible that people are in the church, uh, but because they are falling away, they will be part of the, the ones who perish. The ones who perish. Because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. We know the world, the whole world lied under, and, 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 under you know, deception. Under, uh, under the, you know, the Bible said the sewer of deception. Like, but what he's talking about, that means that some of the people in the church would not even believe and they will not receive the love of the truth so that they might be saved. That means these people will perish. I want you to understand these scriptures that are Thank you, Father. So that they may be condemned who did not believe the truth but had pleasure in our righteousness. So this is the mystery of wickedness. And the Bible says the mystery of wickedness, okay, has something to do with this. So mystery of wickedness means, you know, um, when we say trans transgression, when we say iniquity, wickedness, it is the same as transgression, a state of lawlessness, a state of, so the Bible says the lawless man. But in the state of lawlessness before the lawless man come. So when we see lawlessness, when we see anarchy, confusion, then when you see plagues, when we see things happening, which were not supposed to be there, that is taking freedom of people away, then it means that it is a sign of the Antichrist who is the lawless man. Because there should be lawlessness before the lawless man comes. So that is what is going to happen. Now, so when lawlessness comes, the Bible says that then they will begin to preach peace, but it will be a false peace. So that is what the Bible says. When you hear peace, 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 somewhere, know that it is not the peace of God. It's not the peace that Jesus gives, but the peace that the world gives. And it's a deception peace. Just to give power to the Antichrist. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. So the emphasis here is on the verse number 8. Now let's go to the book of Matthew chapter number 24 verse number 12. So that I can read a portion of scripture unto you here. What Jesus also spoke about. Praise God. Now hear this one. The book of Matthew chapter 24. The verse number 12. Okay. Now let me start from the verse number 10. I said, And then many will be offended. Many will be offended. Will betray one another. And will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. So now a lot of false prophets have come and they are teaching things other than the word of God and diverting people from the, the spirit of truth. They are diverting people from the scriptures of truth. And they are teaching their own mindset and the doctrines of demons. The Bible says people who heed the doctrines of demons and the doctrines of devils. Now the Bible says here, then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. The word is deception. They will not teach nothing about Jesus. They will teach things about, you know, you know, things that doesn't make sense. Things, common sense, this, all those things are deception. They call them false prophets. The Bible prophesied they are coming. So when you see them teaching the things and driving, driving uh, you know, striving to divert the attention of the, the believers and the people of God from the word of God and from Jesus Christ, know that these are deception. These are workers of iniquity. And they are trying to deceive the people of God with sweet tongue. And the Bible says, so when you see those things, know that the prophecy of Jesus has come to pass. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Now, and he says, and because lawlessness will abound, because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. Because lawlessness shall abound, the love of many shall grow cold or was cold. The Bible says in the book of King James, in the King James Version. So the Bible says that the mystery of wickedness or lawlessness Okay, or iniquity. Jesus was also re echoing that. And because lawlessness shall abound. So, in the, end, in the signs that precede Jesus' coming, uh, that precede the coming of the Antichrist, there will be what? Lawlessness. Lawlessness. And the lawlessness is the era that we are living in now. So, the falling away comes, lawlessness comes, and the Antichrist is revealed. I want you to understand that. The falling away comes because they didn't believe in the word of God. So the Bible says the same time in the book of, um, you know, Exodus when they were in the wilderness, where they did not believe Moses, where the Bible says he sent what? 
uh, um, serpents, snakes, to bite them. And the bronze serpent was erected or raised by Moses. That if you look at it, then you are healed. It's the same thing in the wilderness, where the wilderness is, has got to do with persecutions, when we are facing troubles and plagues and all that. It becomes, the world becomes a wilderness place for us. Where there's no peace, there's no security, uh, there's, there, are, there are uncertainties, okay, in this life. So, it's a wilderness experience. And the Bible says that the, the lawlessness, lawlessness were bound. And the love of many will grow cold. And we are living in the day where people are so insensitive about the plight of, of the ordinary people, the poor and all that. So, so, so we have become so insensitive, so selfish, so wicked, okay? You know, so, so much so that there's no love for the brethren anymore, okay? So the Bible says, and because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. So the Bible is actually emphasizing that Jesus Christ said that this lawlessness, the mystery of lawlessness is indeed true and it's going to happen. And thank God we are living in such days and we are living in such days and times where if you check critically from now to the time of December, yeah, you are going to see what you have not seen before. Up to throughout the, 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 the year 2021, you are going to see certain things you have never seen before since the world began. And as you see it, that is what is going to be happening. All right. And then before the Bible said, when it is over, then the church shall be gathered together again. And the church shall stay. Because as yet, we are going through persecutions and trials to refine us. Because all the time, gold must go through fire before it is refined. The Antichrist is not yet. Because something remarkable will happen in the 2027, the year 2027. All right? The whole world will give heed to one person. Thank you, Jesus. So everything has been arranged to that era. And I want you to take note of that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Now, shadow rabba si hataba. Now, the Bible has said certain things about the, the lawlessness, the mystery of lawlessness, and the fact that lawlessness were bound. In the book of 2 Timothy chapter number 3, verse 1 to 9, I want us to read and then see some things that the Bible spoke about. This is clear prophecy of the Bible speaking about something that will be happening. And indeed, we are living in that day. Hallelujah. The Bible says something in the book of 2 Timothy chapter number 3, in the verse number 1 to 9. It says, but we, we but know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. Perilous. That means, when we say perilous times, a perishing times. I mean, it's easy for people to die. It's, it's easy for people to lose their lives. And the Bible says it will happen in the last days. The Bible says, but know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, naughty lovers, naughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power. And from such people, turn away. The Bible is admonishing us to turn away from such people. For of this sort are those who creep into households and make captives of gullible women loaded down with sins, led away by various lusts, always learning. These are people who claim they know the word of God. And they are trying to use the word of God to dispute the word of God. Always learning. The Bible has, the Bible says Jesus has put it in that way. They are always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. So what they are teaching is deception, it's false. It's not the truth. Because they will never be able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now he says, now as Janus and Jabres resisted Moses, so do this also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds disapproved concerning the faith, but they will progress no further, for their fully will be manifest to all, as this also was. So as Genesis and Jabez also was. So the Bible clearly says that in the in the in the end times, okay, in getting this in the these are the signs of the end time. In the last days, perilous times shall come. And we thank God so much that we are living, we are living proofs of these things because we are witnessing them all over the place. Now we are living in a day where a lot of documentary the documentaries are popping up, you know, indicating countries that are 
into a lot of bloodshed, countries that are into a lot of um, sales of human bodies, sales of human parts, that people are missing indiscriminately, um, children are being missing all the time, and they are taking their body parts and selling it to the rich people who have cancer and living a certain lifestyle. Because right now, if a rich person who has money um, is looking for a body part, okay, he's lost his body part because of excessive, um, um, you know, lifestyle. And so they, they have, they've lost some of the organs. And so they need organs. They need kidneys. They need heart transplant. And they need any other organ. And there are other nations that have uh, these um, organs in abundance, you know. And you know that when somebody dies, he loses this kind of organs. So the person must be alive for this thing to be taken. And it has become a trade, a particular trade in this world that people are, you know, so insensitive, so appalling, um, so unheard of. Um, it's something we don't even have to talk about. And before even this uh, pandemic came, um, there were a lot of news in the United States of America where they have already passed a law in some certain states where human beings are traded, where you can now, you know, request, if you go to a restaurant, you can request for a human meat, like a human flesh as meat on, on your food, you know. And these are atrocities. And you know that they will never, you know, accept a corpse, you know, flesh to eat. That means human beings must be stay alive before. So where are they going to get the meat of a human being? That means they will kill you to get it. Now, so we have come into a point where the Bible says, when you see um, it will happen as in the days of Noah, when men were eating and drinking, what kind of food were they eating? What kind of meat were they eating and drinking? What kind of drink were they drinking? That means if they are eating your human body as, as flesh, as meat, then they will drink the human blood as drinks. So he says that as it was in the days of Noah, so shall you see in our days. So these, are, these things are happening and people are refusing to understand. Thank you, Jesus. And I thank God that all these things are coming out for, I was watching a documentary and it was so appalling, the kind of things that were being reviewed that people are into trade about um, women and children cutting body parts and all that. You know, breast and all that, and 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 body parts, kidneys, lungs, um, um, and 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 heart, so that the people are rich when they lose their bodies, they can come and buy in hundreds of thousands of dollars and millions of dollars. You know, for them to keep them alive, for for them to be alive at the expense of someone. So they even said something like, um, if if you are going for a surgery in a certain particular country, know that you are going to enjoy somebody's part, somebody who was killed, a child or a young boy, a young girl who was killed for you to get a body part. So you are living on somebody um, who was um, unlawfully killed for you to enjoy his part. And that is what they are buying and they don't care about it because they must live and others must die. That is a philosophy that has come into, has crept into the world now. And I pray that this mystery of wickedness you understand and keep yourself in the love of Jesus Christ so that nobody will, you, you know, get you before your time. Hallelujah. We rebuke such spirit by the power of the Holy Ghost. Whether we like it or not, Jesus spoke about it so they will happen. Apostle Paul prophesied it, they will happen. As it is happening, it's, it, 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 it's something that is happening right now. Thank you, Jesus. Another scripture in the book of Romans that I want to review to the book of Romans chapter number one, and that talks about it, and I want to review to you about the same kind of scriptures, okay? The book of Romans chapter number one, um, from the verse number 18, he says, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. The Bible is promising that they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish heart were darkened. Then the Bible says in the verse 22, professing to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of incorrupt, the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man and bears and four-footed animals and creeping things. Therefore, God also gave them up 
to uncleanness. So they, it is a part they chose and God also endorsed it for them. That, okay, go. Because now they are being what? Cast away. They are being cast out into the outer darkness. Therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness in the lust of their heart to dishonor their bodies among themselves. Who exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worship and serve the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this reason, God gave them up to, a vi to vile passions for even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. So we clearly see that, you know, like this, this is the gay issue that we're talking about where women go for women, men go for men. The Bible says, like these are the natural ways God do the things. So the, the, there are women exchange their natural use for what is against nature. So according to nature, that is what God made it. That's how he made it. So what they are doing is actually contrary to nature. But they bastardize the people who are criticizing them because they are doing everything against nature. And when nature is being destroyed, they are complaining. Now it says, likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the women bend in their lust for another, another, men with men committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error which was due. So there will be penalty. The penalty is due. The Bible says, you know, there will, there will be penalties for all these homosexuals and all those things. The Bible has said it and it will happen. Hallelujah. Now hear this one. He says, again, even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting, being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness. So the wickedness is appearing here. Covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness. They are whispers. They are whispers, biters, hitters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things. These are wickedness. Inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do not only do the same, but also those who approve of and also approve of those who practice them. So it means that. The same punishment is waiting for those, not only those who do it, but those who also want, who approve of them. So if you are making laws and then you make laws in favor to approve those things, it doesn't matter how good Christian you become because the Bible says, if you approve of them, you too, you face the consequences. That is what the Bible has said. Many a time, we have not read the Bible. We don't read the Bible. We don't capture the Bible. We don't, so we don't, allow the Bible to regulate our conduct. So we just, you know, feel something that is right for others, so we just do it. The Bible says even lawmakers, even politicians, even um, our, our, our ministers of state, even our presidents, when they approve of such things and claim they are Christians, the Bible said they will face the consequences. The Bible said they shall be punished. The Bible said they shall face the penalty of this error. The Bible calls it error and they shall face the penalty of it. Glory be to Jesus. Now let me read something to you. In the Bible, there are several scriptures that reveals people who are, the, um, the Bible has revealed a lot of people who are um, into these mysteries of iniquity. Though. So when we talk about mysteries of iniquity, it means that there are groups of people who are actually hiding and doing these atrocities. These are Satan's children. And when you read and, and you go to watch our, um, the mysteries of the Bible came, the mysteries of the Bible Canaan, you will understand, you know, that the devil has his children in the end time, in this earth realm, who are also perpet you know, perpetrating his agenda, who are also fulfilling his agenda in the end times. The Bible says he knows his time is up. So he's doing everything possible so that he can now take as many as he can to hell. But in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray to strengthen the church of Jesus Christ. We pray that the church will live. The church will stand the test of the time that is coming by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. If you agree with me, just shout amen in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. Marco Zivra Adabo Shahaya. Let me read the book of Malachi, chapter number 1, verse 4. You know, Malachi is a prophecy. 
the prophecy was describing and the people of Israel, how that they had departed from God. And then there was a future plan that God had, you know, spoken about. Malachi was a prophet in the days of Nehemiah, and he received a direct message from God. And the message was characterized with judgment, okay, to the people, judgment unto the people with a lot of plagues and all that. And so the, the, the priests at the time were so corrupt. There were wicked practices at the time when Malachi was there. There was false sense of, you know, security and uh, there was a lot of um, um, evil worshipping, hypocrisy and infidelity and mixed marriages and all that. And there was a lot of congregation of God at the time had corrupted themselves so much so that there were so many false worship. Um, there was worship of Baal Pua and, and there was so much arrogance and all that. So um, this, this prophet was sent and he began to warn the people of Israelite about the things that they have done and the future you know, the future um, events that was going to take place. So Malachi did prophesy because from the time of Malachi to the time of John the Baptist, the, God was very silent. The Bible, they called, the, they called that, that kind of um, period, a dark age, you know, the dark ages where the, the, the Lord was silent and he was not speaking to anybody about anything. So Malachi, the prophet Malachi in the book of Hebrew, um, the, the Hebrew people call it Malachi, uh, Malachi, which is the messenger of Ma, uh, Yahweh. Malachi means the messenger of Yahweh. So he was a messenger of Yahweh with a strong voice and he prophesied. He prophesied how God was going to redeem the situation. And, and, and when he prophesied, for 400 years after um, he prophesied his condemnation, um, God was very silent. For 400 years, God was very silent. Amen. Until John the Baptist came, you know, and Gabriel um, revealed himself and John the Baptist came. No angel visiting the earth, no voice of God coming, no prophet of God prophesying. And that was the message Malachi, you know, brought to the to. to to the body of, of, of the synagogue at the time and, and, and the people of God at the time. So Malachi the chapter 1, he began to reveal the intent of God to the people of Israel. So he says, the burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. Verse 2 says, I have loved you. He was talking about Israel. So this is God, direct message from God to the people of Israel. That I have loved you, says the Lord. Yet you say, in what way have you loved us? Was not Jacob Esau's brother so the Lord is saying, was not Jacob Esau's brother? Say the Lord, yet I have loved Jacob. Yet Jacob I have loved, but Esau I have hated. So he's talking about the fact that Israelites are Jacob's descendants. Jacob was the Israel. Jacob's name, remember Jacob's name when he was returning from um, his uncle's place and um, with his wives and his, his whatever he possession and his, his, his servant that he had acquired from Laban, you know, the Bible says he met his brother, and so he went. Them, he made them to go hide. And that night, same night, he rested with an angel, and the angel asked him, what is your name? And then he said, I'm Jacob. And the angel said, no, you have to be Israel. Your name is Israel. And from that time, um, he went to give an offering to the Lord to confirm the name. So the name upon Jacob, Saplana, became Israel. Okay, Israel. So he's saying that, Jacob, I have loved. Esau, I have hated. So one of the reasons why God loves Jacob is that I have hated your brother and I've loved you because he despised his birthright and gave it to you by, by a price of food. And laid waste his mountain. So Esau began to build, he began to build mountains. He began to build an estate on the mountains, high places. So Esau became very powerful. The Bible says, and the Lord says, and laid waste his mountains and his heritage. So everything he acquired, the Bible says he laid it what? He laid waste, he made it waste. He wasted it for the jackals of the wilderness. So the wilderness, the jackals who were the wilderness, they took over. Even though Edom has said, so Esau is Edom. When we talk about Edom, it means the people of Esau. They are Edomites. All right? Even though Edom has said, we have been impoverished but we will return and build the desolate places. So God had, you know, had laid his estate waste, but he said they will return and build it again. So that was the formation of the human people in, in all the dispensation of the world now. People are dispersed in several territories, you know, Europeans, Americans, Australians, you know, Chinese and all that. When you talk about, when you see them in the Bible, you see how they began to build again. And the Bible says something, that's here the Lord of hosts, 
they may build, but I will, I will throw down. The Bible says, yes, they will build. But when you build, I will throw them down. They shall be called the territory of wickedness. So God is revealing who the wicked people are. They shall be called the territory of wickedness. The territory of wickedness. The Bible says, they shall be called the territory of wickedness. And the people against whom the Lord will have indignation forever. So the Lord's anger is, is upon Esau forever. Because Esau hates his brother forever. That anger is still in him. It's still in the, in the sons and sons and sons and generation down the line of Esau against his brother Jacob. And so all these um, things you see that some people were carried captives. Some people were carried into several lands to be slaves and all that. These are all the kind of things that happened. They built wealth and they were searching for money and wealth all over the place. So when they found a place where there was wealth, they began to trade with people and bought all the people and displaced them. They bought the nobles. They bought um, the, the energetic people, the people who could build, you know, the places for, for, for the almighty God, the, the, the generation. They bought all of them and sent them, relocated them to another land to build their own place. So the Bible calls them the territory of wickedness. They raped women and children. A lot of atrocities happened. You know, the Bible has captured a lot of things, but people don't understand. He said, they may build, but I will, I will throw down. They shall be called the territory of wickedness. And the people against whom the Lord, so those people against whom the Lord, okay, will have indignation forever. When the Bible says he will have indignation forever, it means that he will be angry with them forever. Your eyes shall see and you shall say, the Lord, the Lord is magnified beyond the border of Israel. So the Lord was addressing the people of Israel, but he brought in Edomite because he wanted to tell them how he has loved them above the Edomites. All right? That is the word of the Lord. Now, there are a lot of scriptures I can go on and on and on and show you all these things, okay? Now, so that you can understand, let's go also on to the book of First John chapter number 3, verse 18. Um, First John chapter number 3. First John chapter number 3, verse 18 to 19. The Bible says something here. First John chapter number 3. Glory be to Jesus. Okay, first John chapter number 3, sorry. First John chapter 3, um, from the verse number 4. Let me read the verse number 4. Okay, let me read the verse number 4. Then I'll go to John 3, um, 3, 18 and 19. The book of 1 John chapter number 3 from the verse 4. He says, whoever commits sin also commit lawlessness and sin is lawlessness. So the man of sin coming, sin is actually his food. He is a character of sin. He says, he said, child, what do you expect? So the Bible says in the verse 10, in this, the children of God and the children of the devil are, are manifest. So they are the children of God and they are the children of of the devil. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does who does not love his brother. So the people who are practicing lawlessness and wickedness, they do not love their brother. The Bible is clear on it. All right? They do not love their brother. And let's go to the the verse number 11 to through to number 15, okay? He said from for this is the message that you heard from the beginning that we should love one another not as Cain who was of the wicked one and murdered his brother and and why did he murder him because his works were evil and his brothers righteous do not marvel my brethren if the world hates you so the world they have formed the world and they hate their brother which is what Jacob and Jacob is the one producing the Christianity, you know, you know, season. Because the Bible says Israel are not all Israelites. Are not all Israel who are of Israel. That means the sons of Jacob are not all of them who are from, who will be saved as Israelites. But the seed, Jesus is the seed. So those who are in the seed will be the one to be accounted for. So they will, so the numbering of the Israelites are counted by the seed. So if you are in the seed, you are counted as Israelites. So even if you are a Gentile, Christian and you are in a seed, you are counted as a spiritual Israelite. That is what the Bible says. The people don't know scriptures. They should go into it and understand it. Now the Bible says this, not as Cain who was of the wicked one. Not as Cain who was of the wicked one. So Cain was from the wicked one and murdered his brother. 
And why did he murder him? Because his works were evil and his brothers righteous. And do not marvel, my brethren, if the world hit you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brethren. So that is what Christianity, we have to love ourselves. The Bible says that he who does not love his brother abides in death. Whoever hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. So the Bible is revealing the mysteries of lawlessness. That these people murder their brothers. They don't care. They bring concussions to us to buy. They bring whatever atrocities that they can get. And then we do this. They want people to die from the face of this earth. These are wickedness. These are the people that the Bible said they are the mystery of wickedness. Now let me read some portion of the Bible in the book of John to you. We are revealing the scriptures of God concerning the things that we are talking about. Glory be to Jesus. My God. Glory be to Jesus. Now, let's read the book of um, John chapter number 3, verse number 18 to 19. He says this, and I'm, I will read. He says, he who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe in him is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. And the ninth, he says, and this is the condemnation that, this is the condemnation, that the light has come into the world and then, and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light lest he, his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light, that his deeds may be clearly seen, that they, they have been done in God. Okay, this is what God is revealing unto us. It is a very profound scripture that the Lord is revealing unto us. And we must understand these things that God has spoken unto us. Because this is the mystery of wickedness the Bible is spoke to, to speaking about. Now, this is where wickedness and lawlessness comes from. Alright? Now, Wickedness in the scripture, in the book of um, where the scripture was speak from, the book of 2 Thessalonians, chapter number um, 2, the verse number um, 1 to 7. Wickedness is explained as poneria. Poneria means, poneria means depravity or iniquity or evil purposes or schemes or plots. All right. In the book of Ephesians, chapter number 6, verse 12, the Bible has highlighted there. Oh, he's talking about the mystery of wickedness. There's a whole institution of the kingdom of darkness, okay, spearheading this kind of thing. So they are the ones who are the mysteries of wickedness. And I want to show you the mysteries of wickedness God revealed to us in the Bible. It is up to us to know and appreciate what God has already put there for us. Hallelujah. The book of Ephesians chapter number 6, verse number 12. He says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this age and against spiritual host of wickedness in heavenly places. Spiritual host of wickedness. So the spiritual there means um, pneuma, pneumaticos. Pneumaticos is what? A superhuman person who is doing evil. So a spiritual host of wickedness. It's like the, the Lord God has the host of God. Now let me read the book of Psalm to you about the host of God. Psalm 148. Glory be to Jesus. Mark Shatala Mahaya. Oh my God, Maso Pradisha. Now, Psalm 140 verse 1, he said, Praise the Lord, praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the height. Praise him all his angels. Praise him all his hosts. So God has a host. He has angels and he has hosts. His hosts are the armies who in this end times, all of them have come. Who have the captains, the two witnesses as their captains or their, 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 um, their, 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 their leaders, okay? And the Bible has said that these are the host of God, the host of the armies of God. He said, the Lord God of hosts. So in the dark world, they are replicating the same thing. They are copying. Um, they, they also have the spiritual host of wickedness. The spiritual host of wickedness means supernatural beings, okay, who are living in, in like, is, these are superhumans, okay, superhumans. That means they are 50-50. Human half, um, demonic spirit half. And, and they, they are together. These are the children of the devil. These are the children of darkness. These are the Canaan, the Canaanites. These are the, the, the Cain people who are living in the earth realm. And they are the custodian of all wickedness coming to the earth realm. They want 
to reduce the number of people on the earth. They want to fight against righteousness. Uh, these people hate righteousness to the core. So they are fighting everything they can. They are using every medium, every deception. And their, their means of doing these things is deception. And you need to understand deception. Now, now you need to understand that deception is the kind of weapons that they are using. And they are using all cunning, you know, means. They are using all kind of, um, 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 you know, trickery way and all that, you know, they are in travesty. They are, they are using all kinds of, you know, you know, all kinds of, these are the weapons they are using. And it, it's not like anything that they are using that is sophisticated. They are using deception. Um, they have a lot of people who are speaking the same thing and they've bought a lot of people who are speaking the same thing, propaganda, and they are just using that means to rather get a lot of people the, and the church is their prime target. And I want, if you are a believer, I want you to stand up. The Bible says, having done or stand, um, get at your, your waist with the, uh, you know, the, 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 you get your, your waist with truth. All right, the belt of truth, get it. You know, get that one because you need to know the truth. The Bible says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. So you know the truth, the truth is shall make you free. You walk out of captivity. But if you do not know the truth, I tell you the truth that you shall be tossed to and fro. A lot of things are going to happen that will be uh, a dint on 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 the on 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 the on, on the on the church of Jesus Christ, on the people of God, on the earth. Realm. And the people must be wise. They must open their eyes to see what is unseen, to see what is happening. For mystery of wickedness is at work. The Bible says it's already at work. Let me read a, a portion of the Bible um, where Paul started talking about. All these things that will be happening. Thank you, Jesus. Mark Abashanda. The Paul was Paul started talking about it when he was still in Rome, and the book of um, the book of Acts, chapter number twenty, from the verse number um, twenty six. He says, "Therefore I testify to you this day that I am innocent of the blood of all men, for I have not shown to declare to you the whole counsel of God. This is what we we ought to do. We declare the whole counsel of God, not some, not closing some chapters of the Bible. Now, therefore, take heed to yourselves." And to all the flock, among which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers. So the Holy Ghost has made the overseers. Then Paul is admonishing them to take heed. Why? Because he sees something. To shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. So Jesus purchased the church of Jesus with his own blood from the altar. And the Bible says, for I know this, he know this, that after my departure, salvage wolves, salvage wolves, will come in among you, not sparing the flock. So today we are angry that people are, you know, cheating the church and all that. The Bible said it, Paul said it. He said, salvage wolves will come and they will not spare the flock. And also from among yourselves, men will rise up among yourselves. They are not going to be away from, um, from you. They are among yourselves. The Bible says in the book of Jude, certain men have crept in unnoticed. All right? The Bible says for a long time, these people, their judgment and their condemnation was marked. Now, but they have crept in and noticed. The Bible says this. He says, therefore, he says, also from among yourselves, men will rise up speaking perverse things, perverse things, to create a kind of religion for themselves so that the people, they can deceive the people who follow them, to draw away the disciples after themselves. These are the people who are doing that. The Yanum people are there. The Babylonian kingdom, they drew all the people to themselves. They have masses of people who are in bondage right now, leading them astray. And the Bible says in the book of Revelation, my people come out from among them, the book of Revelation 14. Otherwise, God will destroy you and them, the Bible has said. Now, hear this one. He says, therefore, watch and remember that for three years, you know, imagine God reveals something to Paul and Apostle Paul begin to warn the people for three years. He said, for three years, I did not cease to warn everyone day and night with tears because the things he was seeing, it was so much atrocities coming that he was crying as he was warning the people. So now, brethren, I commend you to God. That's where he commended the people to God. I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. Among those who are sanctified. So these are the things that the Bible was talking about. These are the things that the Lord Jesus, Paul warned the people at the time. He warned them that when, when I depart, 
salvage was to come in. Now, when Paul departed, do you know what happened? Other people came and took the gospel and formed them, them, themselves some kind of leadership. And then they formed their own doctrines, their own books, trying to divert the worship of Jesus Christ and did it their own way so that spirituality of Christ shall be taken away from the thing. So that the, the baptism of the Spirit of God shall be taken away because they don't need the Spirit. What they need, they have their own spirit. They just want the people to build their empire. That is what the Bible prophesied. The book of Malachi prophesied and said, they may build, but I will destroy. These people have built things. I tell you the truth, they build things. The false prophet is their leader as we speak. The false prophet is their leader as we speak. In 2016, the Lord revealed to me that the false prophet will be commissioned and he will start speaking pompous words. He will start speaking. He will start negotiating. He will start gelling everything together. Peace treaties and all that will be signed. He will deceive many. He is false prophet. The Bible says he will deceive many. And these are the people who created and built this empire. They built this empire and then a lot of people who love Jesus entered in there and they deceived them. And they did not teach the word of God, the engrafted word of God, the infallible word of God, the word of God that abides. They didn't teach the truth. They always talk about peace and all that. They everything contrary to the spirit of God and the scriptures of God, that's what they're doing. Even marriage, the way the Bible way of marriage, they change it. Everything about the ordinances of God, they changed it. They changed everything. And the people, they brought the people to follow themselves. Paul said it. They would, they would speak in perverse things to draw away the disciples after themselves. And they started doing their own things. They changed everything. They instituted bishopric offices. And they brought dogma and creed. And that is why a lot of people, a lot of you know, spirit-filled people started getting away from them and they started calling them Protestants and all that. You know, you need to understand the knowledge of the Bible. You need to be blessed with the knowledge of the Bible so that you don't miss what the Lord has for us. Okay? So that you don't miss what the Lord has for us. I began to explain to you about the, the book of Ephesians. You know, to explain to you what principalities means. Okay? Principalities means the first person or first, you know, um, or a thing in a series, the leader by which everything begins, the origin, the first place. So Satan was the one who was the leader of these principalities and powers. And he came to the earth realm and deceived Adam and took the power, authority, and went back to sit in the heavenly places where angelic and the principalities were living. And then he established the powers. The powers are the exosias, the power by choice, liberty of doing things as one, as, as one pleases. That means they, need, they needed delegated authority. It's a magistrate delegation. It's a delegated influence, authority over a jurisdiction. So they were, the demons were the ones who were given to rule over certain places and all that. All right? Thank you, my father. Because of time, I will end here, but I will continue the second part of the mystery of wickedness or lawlessness. And I will take you into the prophetic books, okay? I am not done. I will take you into the prophetic books. I will explain to you when we meet uh, in the next episode about powers, about rulers of darkness, and about spiritual wickedness. And then the spiritual wickedness will take me into um, the, 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 the book of Genesis. It will take me into the books of the prophet. And I will explain to you with scripture basis. These people have been there already, like I'm revealing to you from the book of Malachi. So you know that you ought to be wise. You ought to be discerning. You don't have to follow device fables. You don't have to follow any cunning deception stuff. No. You don't have to follow any people who don't know their left from right. You have the spirit of grace in you. You have the spirit of God in you. You need to, you need to understand the word of God. The Bible says, your spirit and my spirit bears witness that the words of God coming, they are from the Lord. That is what you need. You don't need anybody to deceive you. You need to sit on the word of God and study the word of God for yourself. 
and become a champion for the things of the spirit. I bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. I bless somebody who has sat to hear this word in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree and declare over your life that you are blessed by the power of the Holy Ghost. The Bible says you are cleansed through the word which I have spoken unto you. Which was if even any of you has any afflictions, for I more information, visit www.johnanochiministries.org www.worldwidewordministries.org or call 0302-507-154 or 0540-996-670. This broadcast is made possible by partners of John Anarchy Ministries.